I invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of our gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and the disciples went on and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And in three days he will rise again. But they didn't understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. <sighs> for, the want, for the way they had argued with one another, who was, in it, who was the greatest, Jesus sat down. He called the twelve and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant to all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes me, not me, but the one who sent me. This ends the reading of our gospel. You may be seated. We can always find true life in the midst of the, of the disciples' lives. How many of you as children fought with your brothers and sisters? Oh, yeah. Oh, this side's much better. <laughs> we should all move to the left. <laughs> the disciples are just like children. They want to know who does daddy like the best? Who's his favorite disciple? Who, uh, who does he love more? It's got to be me. It's got to be me, right? It's me, it's me. I did more than you did. I healed more than you did. Well, I cast out more exorcism demons than you did. And I can hear the disciples on the road saying those things to each other. But soft enough so they thought that Jesus wouldn't hear. But like many of you in the pews, you know, um, just like Jesus, Pastors have a pastor's ear, and they can be talking to one person and hearing two other conversations and can speak to them in those conversations. And it was the same as Jesus. Jesus could hear what they were saying, but he wanted them to say out loud that we were fighting amongst each other to see who it is is the best. And Jesus, like your mamas and daddies, if you had ever asked them such a question, would say, I love you all the same. You are all on my books, right? Love y'all. That's what Jesus was saying to the disciples. So stop arguing against yourselves, and let's do what we're really here to do. But I find the most important part of this scripture lesson isn't the disciples wanting to know who is better than whom, and who does Jesus love more than whom. The best part of this whole piece of scripture is the child. He bring, Jesus brings one child into their midst and says, this is what it's all about, this pure, undefiled child. And guys and girls, if you read the front of your bulletin, what does it say? I'm going to leave it blank one Sunday and see if you all want to notice. <laughs> and all God's children. We are children still and always will be. Our oldest son is 36. He will always be Joey and he will always be this little orange boy I brought home from the hospital. Whether he's 36 or 96, he is my little boy. You, if you are still lucky enough to have your parents, are your 
child to them. You will always be their child to them. I don't care how old you are. And when we are in this place, and in this space, or in any space where we gather together, at least for one hour, I want you to know that you get to be children and take the cares of parenthood away from you. For God has taken that burden off of us and he has taken the burden of being a parent on himself. We are God's children. And God knows that sometimes we fight like children over the dumbest things. And God says, come on guys, love each other. Do you remember reading about that anywhere in the Bible? I just ask you to love one another. I'm pretty sure you all have seen that somewhere in the Bible or heard it in a sermon or sung it in a song. Yes. We are God's children. And for the time that you're here, it's a time to say, wow, I didn't know that. Or, wow, can you teach me this? I get to be your nice aunt who says, <laughs> who says, let me teach you, or let me show you how, or this is what that means, at least to me. I'm not up here to be your mom or your dad because that's God's, that's God's world, but I am here to intercede for those occasions that there needs to be intercession. Being a child of God means you just get to let go. Let go of all the worries on your heads this day. On this day and in this hour, I want you to be able to forget about the cow who isn't delivering a calf in a manner in which she should be. A crop that has gotten wet once again just as it was about ready to be harvested. A classroom full of children who aren't quite getting it yet. A house that you're going to come home to and there are dishes in the sink because you were just too tired last night. Set all of that aside. And for at least just this hour, be God's children. Be unblemished and be forgiven and know that you are forgiven. Even when we don't do confession and forgiveness every Sunday, you are always forgiven, no matter the sin. And as children, we can be pretty sinful sometimes. And it seems the older we get, sometimes the worse our sins become. And then we reach an age where our sins become less harmful. And we begin to realize it's okay to just love each other even when we don't agree. And I think that as children in this church, that's where we need to land. Is that we can be here and we can love each other and we can disagree about what color the walls are, or what should be served at potluck, or whatever it could be. Here we need to let all that go, and just learn that we can just love each other, just who we are, flawed and all. Because not one of us can stand here perfectly. If you could, you wouldn't need to be here, and Jesus never would have come, and we would never have a cross before us. But we are flawed. And in this space, it's okay to be flawed together and to love each other amidst all those flaws. It's who we are. In this piece of scripture from Mark, one of the other greatest things that come out of that is that in order to be first, you must be last. And as Jesus said, I came here to serve, not to be served. Those are important words for us. Words that we should live out as we leave and go into the community and into the greater world. 
I'm not here to be served. I am here to serve. And we are here to be the children that God calls us as his own. And what greater gift could be given than to know that you truly are a blessed and beloved child of God. Amen.